right, folks, as you can see, I'm draining the oil out. Um, that is one massive drain plug. It's, uh, to take that out, it was a one and one eighth socket size. So that's, that's pretty big. I would say, I'm not sure what grade the oil is. I haven't found that out yet, but, um, you know, it doesn't look too bad. It has a, has a bit of a funny smell to it. I've smelled it before, but it almost like it has a uh, Vicks Vapor rub in it. That's what it smells like, so it's kind of odd. I haven't seen it before. I haven't smelled that in oil before either. But I'll be glad to get this out. It should hold about eight quarts. Um, I'm still still uncertain what type of oil is going to go into it. I uh, I heard that maybe 20W50 um, is the right right type, but I'm going to continue to search a little bit uh, just to see if there's any other information out there on it. So the oil actually looks pretty clean in it, so. I would have drained it anyways, even if I would have known that. I have no idea what the what the level was in it, so... Uh, I'm going to show you a few other things that I've been working on on the vehicle. I've actually made some pretty good progress on it. Um, but one of the things that I discovered while under the car was... Uh, unfortunately... The first major issue that I've seen with it. I found two cracks here. Hopefully you can see those. Two cracks on the bottom side of the transmission case. And uh, this isn't a pan. There's nothing to replace here other than the whole transmission. So, yeah. And I, that might be a crack all the way to the edge, I'm not sure. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. Um, one's probably a little bit bigger than the eraser head on a pencil. And one is uh, just a bit smaller than that. So I actually posted a question online, did some research. Some people talk about using JB Weld on this. I'm not sure how that would work. I have no experience with it. Um, and, and one person um, that's part of the Willie's Overland Night Registry Group suggested that maybe I could drill these out, uh, tap them, and then put a plug up in it, which I thought was a good idea. The only concern I have is shavings ending up inside the case when I drill. And that one is really close to that bolt. And to get it round, I'd really have to drill that out. What I thought about doing was um, trying to braise it. Uh, I don't know about welding. I'm not a, I'm not a welder. I've tried it once before and I I found out that I'm better at cutting things than I am welding things, so I don't think welding is the right way to go. Um, but I am going to call a few folks tomorrow and some folks that deal with mobile welding and stuff and see if maybe if they can come out and take a look at it. If not, then um, may maybe brazing is the way to go. So we'll, t we'll see. We'll see what they have to say. A little disappointed, I have to say, but given everything else that's actually gone pretty well with the car. Um, yeah, I can't be too disappointed. But what this tells me is that I'm not as close to being able to move the car as, as what I might have uh, originally expected. So, but that's okay. You know, at least I found it now and not when I thought it was all done and ready to take it out on the road. So, uh, so let, me, let me show you a few other things that I was able to accomplish. <clears throat> so the first thing you might notice is the doors are gone. 
I was able to get the doors off. Uh, it took a little bit of work, but um, yeah, these uh, and, and it did reveal some surface rust underneath the hinges. So, uh, but it's all solid, nothing that I'm concerned about. So I'll be able to clean that up and put some primer on it before I paint it. So uh, I don't feel too bad about that. And the doors themselves, they all came off uh, pretty well. I had to put some lubricant on some of these screws and leave them set overnight. And then even still, there was one or two that were difficult, so I ended up just drilling those out and uh, using a, a, a turnout to be able to pull them out. Um, the driver's side door was actually a little bit easier because I put the WD-40 on that uh, a little bit earlier, left it set, and most of the screws came out relatively easy. I don't think there was one that I had to drill out there. I was also able to remove the glass out of the passenger door. So I have that in the back of my truck and I'm, I'm going to take it down to a, a local glass place. I think they'll be able to make me up a, a another version of it to go into the driver's side door. I'm also taking the front window frame down with me. I have the measurements for the back window. So I'll take those down and see if they can't get the glass made up for me. And we'll be able to put those in when ready. Um, the other thing that you'll notice is the rest of the front flo floor is gone as well as the dash instrument panel and I've taken all the wiring except the battery cables uh, off of the car. Um, there's a little bit of wiring left uh, but not much. So there was um, some wiring I found here in the side that runs up through the side here. And I felt that would be extremely difficult to get out. It runs up through over to the dome light. So I decided to leave that, that power light in as well as the ground that comes back to the front. That's still in. And um, yeah, I think that was it. As well as, oh, there's a, there's a wire that runs down through the steering column that connects to the horn. And it comes out the bottom. Yeah, I didn't think I'd want to take that out. I have no idea what the assembly is like inside this steering wheel and uh, I'm, I'm a little hesitant to even try to pull it apart um, not knowing what I might be getting myself into and what problems I may be causing myself. So uh, yeah, all of that, all the rest of the wiring is gone, it's all going to be replaced. Um, while some of it seemed to work, it's, it seemed to test out that it was okay, I noticed that a lot of the jackets on some of it were starting to fray and it is the original wire so I wanted to replace it. So um, all of the wiring off the car fits into these two bags. <laughs> Everything in here was for the headlights, the tail lights and the fuel sensor and this was all the rest of it. So I was, um, I was pretty impressed that I was able to get all of the wiring off and fit it into two plastic bags. I was able to pull out, the, when we took the dash out, I was able to pull out the instrument panel. We need to sand this down and, and obviously do some repainting on the inside of it. So we'll get that done. Um, yeah, I, I tested out all of the, uh, the switches and meters and stuff and all seems to be good. So uh, shouldn't be any problem there. So we've got the the uh, the light switch. We have the generator. We have our gas and our oil. The oil pressure gauge was the only one that I had an issue with. Oh, here it is. It works, but I'll talk about that in a second. And then our speedometer. Um, the speedometer works well. I think it it's it's pretty good. Um, I actually when I bought the car. I thought it said that it had 80,000 miles on it. It only shows just over 50,000 miles. And I looked on the back and the original seal is still in place. So I believe this to be true. So either this is a different speedometer than what was originally on the car, or this car has just over 50,000 miles on it. 
So with the oil pressure gauge, um, it works. I actually put about uh, 30 to 45 pounds of air in there and the needle went up, but the glass face of it is not set where it needs to be. And I've tried to get it out of there. Uh, I tried to move it around. It does move a little bit, but it is stuck on something else and I cannot fix it. So, Yeah, it's uh, unfortunate because the rest of the gauge works just fine. So I might might need to be replacing that because you can't take this thing apart. Well, there it goes. It's settled almost for now. But I think what's going to end up happening is this could fall back and lay against the needle to the point where it won't swing either way. And I want to make sure that I have a good read on what the oil pressure is going to be. So I don't, I don't really want to have a gauge that doesn't work right. So overall quite a bit of progress um, made. Um, oh I also should say that <clears throat> I've, I went out and it's one of the few things that I've bought for the car so far. Uh, I went out and actually bought wires, some wiring, um, some ring tongue terminals. Uh, I'm replacing all of the screws or washers, or in some cases nuts that go on the back of these, I'll clean up the posts, but the rest of it's all getting replaced. <clears throat> so that is one of the very few things that I've actually bought for the car so far. Um, the other thing, I'll take the generator over here. I think in one of the other videos I may have mentioned this, but this generator sits up in here. And you can probably see that the end of the generator, it, it goes inside of this sleeve gear. Well, they don't really connect. So I, uh, I was actually was fortunate enough to talk to somebody recently, and he was a, a nice gentleman out of Michigan. He was really helpful for me, uh, gave me some really good information. And uh, one of the things I learned is the part that connects onto the end of the generator that goes inside the sleeve, um, he actually makes those. And so he's going to make them for me and send them to me. So once, once he has a chance to do that and I can assemble them onto here, I'll be able to install the generator and, and uh, we should be good to go with that. Um, I still don't know about this coil. I felt pretty good about it, but then I felt on the back side of it that the wire might be frayed a little. So I might be um, I might be in the mode of having to take this thing off and to replace this wire over here. We'll see. I don't know. But. And then the other thing that um, he and I spoke about was uh, I think I'd mentioned this, <clears throat> that one of the few things that's been put on the car that's more modern is this electronic fuel pump. And um, it's not really my desire to keep this here. Um, I've actually started removing some of the wiring from it. So, uh, you know, what, would, what we talked about when I was on the phone with him was to take this off and replace it back with one of the original vacuum pumps. And, and I definitely want to do that, and I have two of them. I don't know the, stare of their, the state of the, that they're in. I haven't disassembled these. One looks like it's been refurbished or somewhat in the process of it. So uh, I think what I will probably end up doing here one of these days is taking this thing apart, seeing what it, you can hear some stuff inside. Uh, seeing what it looks like on the inside. I don't even know if all the parts are in there. Make sure all the ports and orifices are open. And if so, I may end up putting this back on the vehicle and taking the electronic fuel pump off. There's reasons for that, um, aside from the fact that you know it takes the car back to as close to the original state as that it can. So, you know that that's my plan. We'll we'll see how it goes as as I go along. 
we're getting closer to summer but it's still a little cold here in western new york and one of the things uh that slowed me down is it's been really cold here in my workshop and um i got a little sick as a result of being out here in 40 degree temperatures so um yeah it, i couldn't put as much time in out here as i w was hoping <clears throat> And, and I still have a job to do as well. So I was limited to nighttime when after the sun went down. So that made it even colder. And then weekends. And weekends have been a little busy with, with uh, activities with my kids. So I was kind of limited. So what I did the, the other day is I went out and bought a, a salamander heater. Um, it runs off the same fuel as my tractor does, diesel. So... Um, Brought it home, plugged it in, filled it up, fired it up, and within five minutes I had my whole workshop sitting up at 70 degrees. It was pretty nice. So, um, yeah, it, and, it, and I did notice there was about a 20 degree temperature drop between this part of my workshop and inside of my paint booth. And as well as on the other side of that door that goes to uh, another part of my workshop. Yeah, so I think that's about it. Don't forget, subscribe to my channel and share with others. Have a great day. Bye.